Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about textures and sprites. And the goal of this lesson is just going to be to paste an image onto our SFML window. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use something called a texture to load an image onto, and then we're going to draw on top of a sprite. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the basic idea here is we have two new ideas, or they might be new to you again, if you're approaching graphics programming for the first time. And for those of you who have seen this, it's pretty much a similar concept. So a sprite is just some sort of entity. Uh, I'm just going to draw it as a sort of empty box here. And it could be an empty circle or an empty whatever type of primitive. But it's basically something that we can move around, translate, rotate around, mirror, flip, and navigate. Now the sprite itself, you'll notice, is empty here because it doesn't have any pixel data or pixel information here to fill it in. And that's where the texture part comes in. See, the texture is what's going to get filled into our sprite. And then this is the actual shape that we're going to be moving around and transforming as needed. Now, the special thing with textures is that they are pixel data. So that is, we have some image that's made up of these tiny things called pixels. And pixels are the things where we sort of sample from different colors and sort of, uh, when combined, make an image. Uh, but the idea is that an image gets transferred onto our graphics card. So I'll abbreviate that as GPU. And it lives somewhere on our graphics card. So I'll just draw a small version of this over here. And because our graphics card is really good at, well, drawing graphics or taking pixel data and displaying it on the screen, we get hardware accelerated. That is very, very fast ways to draw the image data that we've loaded. So whether you've loaded this image as a JPEG or a BMP file or some other format, we're able to really draw uh, these images fast on these things called textures. Okay, so that's the high level idea. Let's go ahead and take a look at textures and sprites in our actual SFML library to see how this is done. So I've already opened up the sprite and the texture uh, classes here. If you wanna figure out how to go to those, go to learn API documentation and you can search the classes or you can search to the modules and click on graphics and find these associated uh, classes here. So what I'm gonna do is in a little skeleton program, and this is essentially the hello world uh, program that we've had in previous lessons, is I'm first gonna start by creating a sprite here. So I'll have SF sprite. And just looking at our different constructors here, you'll notice that one of the constructors itself does take something uh, known as a texture here. So I can do that and I'll just sort of leave this blank for now set up our sprite with a texture. Now, again, there are different things that we can do with the sprite, like we can change its texture and uh, retrieve the texture or set colors and these sorts of things. But more importantly, we're gonna wanna do things like setting the position or the rotation and just manipulating the actual sprite itself. Okay, now let's actually get to filling in this sprite here. So what we're going to need to do is take a look at our SF texture class. And again, we'll look at the constructor to see just how do we build a uh, texture. And I see there's two options here where we have the copy constructor or just regular texture. So let's just go ahead and build a texture first. And I'm just going to call it texture as such. Now, again, we're going to want to load some pixels into that texture. That's this step here where, again, we're taking some image file and trying to figure out how to add it to this texture thing that's going to be drawn on the GPU. Okay, so what options do we have here? Well, we have a few different functions that actually allow us to do it. And the most straightforward one here is called load from file. So if I go ahead and click on this, you'll go ahead and see that we can load just specifying some file name to some image that we have on our system and actually load that image into our texture and then it'll be uploaded into the GPU all for us in one step here. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and use uh, load from image here. Now there is a default parameter here that's set uh, regarding how much of the image that we actually wanna draw. Uh, I'm not gonna set this here because we just want the full image to be drawn, but you could just get grab a portion of that uh, image if you wanted. Okay, so our texture, we're gonna call it load from file and we need some file. Now there's nothing uh, better I can think of as an image or perhaps more famous than the Mona Lisa. So why don't we go ahead and use that? So go ahead and save this image or 
um, whatever image that you want to use um, and make sure that it's in your lesson repo wherever you're building this project. So I have it here in the same directory as my file. So I can just use the relative file path with dot slash Mona Lisa and we should have our texture loaded up that way. Now, SFML is pretty good, or one of the nice things is you can save this in a variety of formats, whether it's JPEG, bitmap, PNG, or some of the other popular formats. So I, any of those will serve our purposes for now. Okay, so let's finish off our sprite uh, by uh, constructing it with this texture. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and in our main application loop where we're doing the event handling, any updates, and now we need to draw our sprite. So how do we actually do that here? Well, let's go ahead and just kind of look through our sprite here. And well, I don't see anything that says draw or render uh, explicitly. So I'm actually going to want to uh, just look through our classes again and look at our render window and just remind ourselves how we did this. Now there is something here for rendering textures. That's for another sort of technique uh, that's actually described in the tutorials. Um, we can maybe look at that later. Um, but what I actually just want to show you here is under uh, window. Well, in this class, this is where we sort of had our draw before. In fact, uh, if you look at the main tutorial, we had a window dot draw and then some parameter here. And that was the circle previously or rectangle or whatever uh, primitive shape you might have used. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and look through this, so let's go ahead and uh, go down to draw. What I see here is a bunch of different data types here as our sort of uh, arguments here. And let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. And I just see this thing called drawable here. I don't see something specifically saying sprite. So let me click on drawable. And if I look under the hierarchy here, I will see that shape sprite, which is what we want. That's a good thing. Text, vertex rays, and vertex buffer. These are all things that can be drawable or called with this draw call because they inherit from this drawable class. So we want to use SF sprite in this instance. So if I can confirm this by just looking at the sprite class and see that again, it is a uh, type of drawable object. Okay, so we can use that without any problem. So let's just specify our sprite and I'll go ahead and put a semicolon there. And let me go ahead and shrink the documentation. So again, we can see part of the object oriented nature that the SFML library relies on. Uh, and that's how we'll be doing things. And hopefully that was useful just to explore what's going on. So with that said, let's go ahead and compile our project. Let's see if we made any mistakes. Um, if you need help compiling, check out some previous videos. Um, and in this case, it looks like we are good to go. So I'll go ahead and run our project and we can see our image here being rendered. Now, I don't see the whole image. And even if I resize the window, I don't see the whole image here. OK, so how can we take care of this? Well, we have a few different options that we can do. I could actually resize the window here uh, by either doing this manually or looking through some of the window functions and resetting the uh, size. But let's actually see what we can do with the sprite here um, as far as transforming it. So I can set the position. I can set the scale, for instance. I can move the origin. Let's actually do something simple by setting the scale here. And I'm going to set the X scale, so how wide it is, and the Y scale. And let's just go ahead and divide that by two. And I'll do this before our loop so that we don't do this every frame. But I'll set the scale in half, 0.5F. And let's go ahead and recompile, rerun our program. And now we can see our whole image displaying. And maybe we'll also want to do something simple like moving it around. Again, this is where the fun comes in once we have sprites where we can draw images on top because we sort of have a uh, entity here we can play around with. So I'm going to do one last thing and then we'll close out the tutorial here just to show you how to set the position. Now, again, you'll notice there's this vector 2f type, which uh, we haven't talked about yet in this series. So I'm just going to stick to using uh, set position here and then I'll transition to um, set um, with the uh, vector uh, later on. OK, so let's actually do this um, if we want to update the position uh, in our main loop because it's going to be changing here. So what I'll do is on our sprite, I'll set the position and I'm just going to increment it. So I'm going to just create some uh, variable here, float x position. 
And let's go ahead and set it to zero initially. So X position. The Y position I won't change for now. And let's go ahead and just increment the X position every frame in our program. And if it gets too big, however, we don't want it to sort of fly off the window. So let's just say if it's bigger than uh, 30, then X position equals zero. Something like that here. It'll sort of reset here. So just we, so we can see the actual uh, image moving around. Now it's moving around quite fast. So let's go ahead and maybe shrink uh, how fast we're incrementing it and uh, change our range here. So maybe something much, much smaller here. Uh, and let's give ourselves 100 pixels here. All right, so I'll go ahead and recompile, rerun, and now we can see our image sort of scrolling back and forth and moving, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's what we've achieved in this lesson, the ability to understand what we're doing when we are creating a texture, how we can paste that texture or load that texture into a sprite that it's rendering on the GPU so it's really fast, and even some functions to manipulate how that sprite moves. Later on, we'll do some more fancy tricks, perhaps exploring things like transparency or even thinking about how we might want to create a little wrapper around our actual sprite here so it can be easy to initialize and create things. We may also want to take a step back uh, in a next lesson or a future lesson where we figure out how we can just load raw images and maybe change some of the pixels. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So folks, I hope you're enjoying this. And if you are, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see some of those future lessons that I was talking about. We'll see you in the next one.